every time I had to deal with a country, when they saw this whack job standing behind me, they said, oh, man, Trump's going to go to war with us. Today, we're diving into the most jaw-dropping and unforgettable moments from former President Donald Trump's much-talked-about appearance on Joe Rogan's hit podcast. Let's break down the highlights that had everyone buzzing. I love this idea of you teaming up with Robert Kennedy. Right. And I love this Make America Healthy Again yep. idea because there are chemicals and ingredients that are in our food that are illegal in other countries. I think he's a great guy. I, I think love he's the great. fact that you guys teamed up. Yeah. It's and a are you guys are you com completely committed to have him a part of your administration? Oh, I am. But the only thing I want to be a little careful about with him is. Uh, the environmental focus on health focus yeah. you can do whatever you want but i uh, got to be a little bit careful with uh, the liquid gold you know i understand um but listen there's plenty of good work that could be done if you focus on health one standout moment was trump's surprising take on robert f kennedy jr this election season has already been a roller coaster but hearing trump talk about kennedy a former democratic contender turned independent really added a twist Kennedy, the son of the late attorney general and New York senator, initially ran as a Democrat before switching to an independent to ticket, only to later exit the race and endorse Trump. On Rogan's podcast, Trump mentioned that he'd welcome Kennedy into his administration with significant influence, despite their differences on issues like environmental policy. I was never one that could, like, run on a treadmill. I just, and I can do it. You know, when passing a physical... They asked me to run on a treadmill, and then they make it steeper and steeper and steeper. Next up, Trump took some time to boast about his health. While he's faced ongoing calls from critics to release his medical records, especially after Kamala Harris openly shared hers, Trump sidestepped this on Rogan's show. Instead, he claimed that his doctor was impressed with his physical condition during a recent checkup, though he didn't specify when it took place. What made this conversation even more intriguing was Trump's assertion that golf provides him with all the exercise he needs, despite his frequent statements that he isn't into traditional exercise routines. When the doctor said it was at Walter Reed. They said, it's unbelievable. I could have got, I'm telling you, I felt I could have gone all day. But I said, Doc, I can do this all day long. But it's boring to me. Do you understand? Right. It's just boring. Golf's exciting. But I did it for yeah. so long. They couldn't believe it that I did it. And I never, you know, I don't do it. I don't really, you know, I have friends that run on this stuff all day long. Well, yeah, the concept, it was really like two different lives. You know, I had a, a very wonderful life, but I, I wanted to do this. The Apprentice was still going very strong. We had 12 seasons. They wanted me to stay. They all came to see me. They said, we're going to give you a contract. They wanted to extend my contract. Mark Burnett is a great guy. And they wanted to extend the contract. Mark said, you're crazy. Don't run. Don't run. Well, I was thinking about doing it then, but I had a contract with The Apprentice. Plus, I was building two big buildings at the time, and I wanted to make sure they got finished up properly. And it was one of those things. Trump's time on The Apprentice became a major topic early in the podcast. Rogan asked him about how his presidential run impacted his public image, especially with Hollywood celebrities. Trump mentioned that personalities like the hosts of The View and Oprah initially spoke highly of him until polls suggested he was a serious contender for the presidency. This shift, Trump explained, eventually led him to leave the show and dive into politics. He praised executive producer Mark Burnett for his role in making The Apprentice successful, and revealed that polling during the 2012 election was the first real spark that pushed him to consider his long-standing political ambitions. I had a lot of success. Great economy, great everything. Everything was great. We, we The military, we rebuilt it. Biggest tax cuts in history. All this stuff. We, did, we had a great presidency. Some great people, you know. But you don't think about that. I picked some people that I shouldn't have picked. I picked a few people that I shouldn't have picked. And Neocons? Yeah, neocons or bad people or disloyal people. Trump revealed what he considers his biggest mistake during his presidency when Rogan asked him about any regrets from his time in office. Without hesitation, Trump revisited some of his well-known grievances, expressing frustration over certain appointments he'd made. He didn't hold back, referring to former National Security Advisor John Bolton as an idiot and criticizing his former chief of staff, John F. Kelly. According to Trump, these choices were some of the biggest missteps of his presidency, highlighting his ongoing dissatisfaction with figures he feels let him down. Uh, he's bad. Uh, Bolton was a, an idiot, but he was great for me because I'd go in with a guy like a John Bolton. And don't underestimate North, North, if you take a look at North Korea, 
their new, I was there. I mean, I was with Kim Jong. I had a great relationship. I got along great with him. That's how you called him Little Rocket Man? I said, I said, <laughs> yeah, Little Rocket. I said, Little Rocket Man, you're going to burn in hell. And it was a rough, yeah. oh, so rough that people were worried. This is crazy. Trump opened up on Rogan about his unusual relationship with North Korean leader Kim Jong Un, describing it as a friendship that developed after their infamous 2017 exchange of insults. Despite the unique rapport, Trump acknowledged that his efforts to negotiate North Korea's denuclearization didn't lead to any lasting progress. With a touch of humor, he suggested on the podcast that Kim Jong-un could benefit from taking a break from nuclear ambitions to relax on a beach somewhere, showing Trump's tendency to mix serious topics with lighthearted comments. I got to know him better than anybody. Anybody. And I said, do you ever do anything else? Why don't you go take it easy and relax? Go to the beach. You have beautiful beach, nice beachfront property. You know, kidding. So I always got more publicity than other people. And I didn't, it wasn't like I was trying. I don't know exactly why. Maybe you can tell me why. Oh, I could definitely I, tell you. He said a lot of wild shit. CNN, in their all their brilliance, by highlighting your wild shit, made you much more popular. Trump didn't hold back on one of his classic monologues, reflecting on why he commands so much media attention. As he pointed out to Rogan, he's the only president in history with no prior government or military experience, a unique background that he believes fuels public interest. Rogan chimed in with a humorous but on-point observation. Trump's knack for saying what's on his mind, however outrageous, is a key part of his appeal. This unfiltered style, they agreed, has set him apart and continues to capture voter interest. So I want to I want to talk about 2020 because you said over and over again that you were robbed in 2020. Yeah, totally. What? How do you think you were robbed? And I would bring in papers that you would not believe. So many different papers. That election was so crooked. Say that made. I don't believe it's this much, but it doesn't matter. I won by like I lost by like. Uh, I didn't lose, but they say <laughs> I lost. Joe, they say I lost by 22,000 votes. In an interesting twist, Trump almost acknowledged his 2020 election loss during his chat with Rogan. Despite his long-standing insistence that the election was crooked and rigged against him, Trump launched into familiar grievances about alleged voting irregularities. He claimed to have documents that back up his claims. However, at one point, he slipped up, nearly mentioning his margin of defeat before swiftly correcting himself, an eyebrow-raising moment in an otherwise typical defense of his stance on the election. Do me a favor, do you know Elon Musk? Yes. He endorsed me. By the way, he gave me the nicest endorsement to the, the tough. He said, the country's going to fail. You should do the same thing, Joe, because you cannot be voting for Kamala. I've watched you. I know him better than he is. You know what? Without speaking to you, I think I know you maybe almost as well as your wife. I have watched you for so many years. You're not a Kamala person. Your person. weave is getting wide. We're getting no, no, wide with my this weave. But isn't it I want to bring it back to tariffs. But, but wait one second before we finish. with. In a bold move, Trump attempted to score an endorsement from Joe Rogan live on his own podcast. With a bit of strategic prompting, Trump casually mentioned that Elon Musk had shown him support and subtly nudged Rogan to follow suit. He even questioned if Rogan could really support Kamala Harris, making an argument that hinted Rogan should lean his way. Rogan, however, kept things light, laughing off the attempt and redirecting the conversation, letting Trump know he'd rather stick to the topic at hand. 